KTAL TV. This is New Center 6 at 6 with Dale Hoffman and Jennifer Andrews, Ron Young with your weather, and Daryl Rabouche with sports. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you again tonight. A couple of teenagers are behind bars right now in connection with the drive-by shooting in which a 13-year-old was killed. Shreveport police arrested Larry Smith Jr. about 3 o'clock this morning and charged him with principal to a first-degree murder. Then a 16-year-old was also arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Police believe the 16-year-old may be the actual trigger man of the shooting in which 13-year-old Demario Jenkins was killed. Police say Jenkins was with Clay Edwards and Christopher Small when they were shot by a group who were in a gray Cadillac. That happened in the 4900 block of Haywood in Hollywood Heights. Edwards and Small were taken to LSU Medical Center. Edwards was released, and Small was in fair condition tonight. Shreveport police suspect the drive-by is gang-related, and the shooting may have stemmed from an argument earlier. Police plan on making at least one more arrest for the drive-by shooting. Well, because of violent crimes like the drive-by shooting, senior citizens in Hollywood Heights say they are also victims. Many say they're scared to go outside, and they don't understand why there is so much killing in their neighborhood. The center's admirer talked to some residents who say they just want to feel safe at home. Well, I don't know which way they were shooting. All I know is it was, it was, it was, it was not just shooting. Bow, 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 bow. Yesterday's drive-by shooting that left 13-year-old Demario Jenkins dead has residents in Hollywood Heights worried about their safety. Some neighbors say they feel like prisoners in their own homes. Others try and protect themselves with burglar bars. Vera Amos moved to Hollywood Heights 40 years ago. Now she's afraid to go outside. After a while, it'll be where you can't even sit out on the, on the carport because the drive-by shooting is bad. And we don't know what these boys have in mind. But some folks in Hollywood Heights say gang graffiti like this and recent violent shootings are forcing them out of their homes. My husband said a few minutes ago, he said, I'm thinking about moving right now. I said, yeah, I feel the same way. Go some other place. Maybe where it will be peace and quiet. Cause we don't like that kind of stuff. Lawrence Williams says kids and gangs are trying to take over. He says yesterday's drive-by is one of the reasons he's scared to go outside after dark. Late in the evening time, I go in the house. I don't say I can no, after 6 o'clock. You catch me in the door. I ain't gonna say I can't no shit at 8 o'clock tonight. For now, many residents will continue staying indoors and fearing for their safety hoping the violence will end. Ed Myrick, New Center 6. A Webster Parish attempted murder that has gone unsolved for 16 years has apparently been solved. 49-year-old Ernest Beasley, who was wanted for trying to kill a Cullen police officer back in 1981, has been picked up in Detroit. Well, the case was reopened nine months ago, and the big break came when a picture and fingerprint card pointed Lawman toward Michigan. Well, that's where they found Beasley living under the alias Raymond Maxwell. The DA is putting together the extradition papers to bring Beasley back to Louisiana. Testimony finally got underway today in the first-degree murder trial of Calvin Tolbert. Tolbert is accused of the murder of Wilma Liberto. Liberto was shot and killed during a robbery at her lakeside grocery store in August of 1994. The jury was seated in the case over the weekend, and the Caddo Parish DA is seeking the death penalty in the case. Several other suspects have been indicted for the murder, but they have not yet been tried. A college student was very lucky this afternoon. She escaped serious injury in a single car accident on Mooringsport Road just north of Shreveport. Cattle Parish authorities say the 21-year-old woman was eastbound when she apparently lost control of her car, crossed the center line, and hit a culvert. Her car flipped over, ejecting the woman as it rolled above her. She was airlifted to a local hospital, but her injuries were confined to mostly bumps and bruises. Texarkana firefighters are trying to figure out what sparked this blaze in the 2500 block of Walnut Street today. A neighbor spotted smoke and sounded the alarm. Flames were through the roof when the trucks arrived, but no one was home when the fire started, and no one was hurt fighting the blaze. The search continues on Lake of the Pines for a man who fell from a barge Saturday night. New Center's Westmore shows us what happened, and he has some ways to stay safe and stay alive on the water this summer. Besides the reputation of great boating and fishing, the Lake of the Pines carries another dubious distinction, one of drinking and drowning. For the third day, authorities dragged the bottom of the lake for the body of Anderson Jones, Jr. We're not really clear on the how or why the fellow went in the water, but he ended up in the water for some unknown reason. Uh, they attempted to get him out, retrieve him from the water, were unsuccessful in that, and the man uh, 
uh, slip beneath the water has been seen since. This is the second drowning in as many weeks at the lake. The boating fatalities come at a time when the state is gearing up for its water safety initiative. Walker says last year the program helped to greatly reduce the number of drownings on Texas lakes. We, we, we certainly have mounted an intense uh, enforcement effort and educational effort to uh, let the public be aware of what is required of them to, to have on board their boats and be aware of situations and circumstances out here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we can't hold all their hands. We try to do our best. Walker says nearly 300 boats were checked Saturday for violations at the Lake of the Pines. The barge Jones was riding in was one of them. Walker says just two hours before the accident, the barge was ticketed for not having enough life jackets. Walker says life preservers are the single most important item in any boat and should be worn at all times. And that's just one lesson the Parks and Wildlife is trying to convey in hopes of reducing tragedies such as this from happening. On the Lake of the Pines, Wes Moore, New Center 6. And coming up on the New Center at 6, lots of sunshine for the weekend, but now it is time to settle the bill. Ron is in the Weather Center with his eye on the sky. We'll tell you what's headed our way in just a few minutes. But first, a different kind of real-life ER, just as much drama, and the fur can sometimes fly. We'll be back with part one of a special report right after these. of you have seen the hit TV show ER right here on Channel 6. So tonight we will visit a real life ER where the fur can really fly. New Center Cheryl Lackey begins a special report on what to do and where to go if your pet is in trouble. So he's anemic. Typical day, there's no typical day, but we just see Whatever happened to show up. Charles Jennings is a veterinarian at one of the only animal ERs in the Arklatex right now. Yeah, they get sick and they always do it from between 8 and 6 during the week. The idea here is to create a place after hours where the ER doesn't take the place of your vet but works with them. The shot will fire a little bit too, more than likely. Patients here have everything from parvo to fish hooks. To, in this case, a gunshot wound. Does it look like it's bad? This is Tyra. Her owner, Christy Draw, says someone shot her through a fence. Car's good. The doctor told me that she's going to be okay and she's walking fine. I'm just so happy. <laughs> you can never be sure how much you're going to spend when you walk into any doctor's office. In Christy's case, she spent $52.50 just for the ER visit alone for Tyra. She says that's little to pay, though, for a peace of mind and a healthy dog. I would do anything in the world for them. They're like my kids. And that hole where the blood went in, okay. he's twice a day. So whether you agree with paying what can sometimes be a hefty bill to save your pet's life, in Tyra's case, she's going home in better condition, and her mom feels better knowing an important part of her family is going to be okay. As for Dr. Jennings, Sweet. It's on to the next case. In Shreveport, Cheryl Lackey, New Center 6. And the ER we just saw is the only one in the Arklatex that is set up for after hours and for weekends, and it sees patients from all over the area. And tomorrow night, Cheryl shows us just how far people will go and how much they will do when their pets' lives are at stake. That's tomorrow night, 6 and 10. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to surprise us. <laughs> Time now for weather, and hopefully no surprises from you, young man. Well, oh. maybe just because. <laughs> the latest take that away. <laughs> yeah, I already got to memorize. The latest yeah. indications are that we're going to see some probably pretty volatile weather starting to move into the Arklatex. Maybe within the next couple of hours, we've got the latest coming up in just a moment. Okay, thanks, sir. If you want to be trendy in the garden, stick around for New Center's gardening expert, Alan Smith. I'm Alan Smith. This week, we'll spend some time looking at some of my favorite flowers, the old-fashioned roses. we got a lot to tell you about tonight, so let's get started with a flash flood watch now that has been issued for all of our viewing area in northeast and east Texas, anticipating the possibility now of 
one, two, maybe even three inches of rainfall. This will run through tonight across northeast Texas. None of Louisiana, Arkansas, or Oklahoma yet involved in this. Now, there is a severe thunderstorm watch covering the extreme northwestern parts of our area. In fact, it's, it's Lamar, uh, Delta, and Hopkins County. That would be uh, up near the Paris area all the way down to Sulphur Springs. That runs on back to the southwest. In fact, we can show you that watch that runs till 10 o'clock across southwest and central portions of Texas, as close to us as up around Paris. More storms along a frontal boundary that is to our northwest. We can show you that storms blew up last night and then continued on outflow boundaries to move across our area today. Now, as far as this afternoon, we've got quite a bit of activity exploding now across central portions of Texas, actually getting a little closer to the Arklatex, a little outflow boundary here where we did see cloud formation, not a lot of rain formation yet, and showers and thunderstorms across the southeastern part of the Arklatex. So we're kind of sandwiched in the middle. Let's go to Doppler 6 Live real quick and show you what is happening here. Here are the storms across the southeast. Little outflow boundary, very interesting. Watch right in this area. We'll see it start to form up in just a second. There it goes, moving to the northwest towards Shreveport area. Will we see development there? Probably not. But watch the last couple of loops and we see showers and thunderstorms now starting to fire up from uh, Ida Bell and Broken Bow. There they are, all the way back down through Delta County. And indications are some of that activity may really start to form just to the west of us. So a new weather watch may be coming out that will encompass a good part of the Arklatex within the next couple of hours. Let's go ahead and take a look at map features across the region right now and show you that we've got an active cold front. And it is a cold front ahead of it. Texarkana in the middle 80s. Uh, Shreveport has been in the upper 80s. Back behind it, temperatures are in the 60s. So we're going to see a cool down. Here are the thunderstorms that we're watching. It looks like the instability is going to race out ahead of that. So right in this area, maybe even including parts of northwest Louisiana, I look for another weather watch, well, just any time now. So we'll keep a close eye on it. High pressure will build in. The front, though, will probably keep some rainfall in our picture, oh, probably even through tomorrow, but not stormy weather. Here's our stormy weather, or you have to travel to the east along those watch boxes to find anything else going on. But you don't have to go far to find heat in our area. Right now it's uh, 82 degrees under a mostly cloudy sky at Texarkana Regional. 80 and partly cloudy in uh, Frenchport, Arkansas within the past hour. Eloise Ingram has that report in Wascom. Mostly cloudy sky and Leon Slayton with 85 degrees. And home team, thanks for helping me out with those reports today. Mold count is still up over 1,000. Grass at 185, tree pollen at 225. Morning low temperatures. Well, they could have been a little cooler. It was 68 degrees in El Dorado, 69 in Bossier City, 69 as well in Longview, Shreveport, 69, 88. The warmest so far this year for the high in Shreveport. Texarkana topped out at 83 degrees through uh, 5 o'clock with 70 the morning low. And it's still 86 degrees with a mixture of clouds and sun, 55% humidity, a southwest wind and pressure holding steady. A quick break, and it's a stormy forecast. Let's go tonight with temperatures ranging through the 60s, actually maybe some upper 50s north. Tomorrow, 70s will be a nice change from today. But that front should keep rainfall across the southern parts of the Arklatex. Maybe a break coming up on Wednesday, and there's another weather system <laughs> headed our way. Tonight, thunderstorms become likely strong, possibly severe, with some heavy rainfall. Tomorrow, still mostly cloudy and some scattered rainfall, but cooler, 75 to 80. And it's an unsettled weather pattern all the way at this point through the weekend. But we'll have to watch the next several hours very closely, and I certainly will. Okay, we appreciate it. Thank yes, you, Ron. You are in charge. Okay. okay. Antique roses. They're not only pretty and easy to grow, they're the latest trend in gardening. New Center's Alan Smith starts out with a little history lesson for us tonight. This week we're going to talk about one of my favorite flowers, the rose. Now, I don't mean just any rose. I'm talking about old-fashioned roses those that were popular hundreds of years ago. Now, each day I'll take a look at a different aspect of them. For instance, how to use them in the garden, which varieties will bloom more than once during the season, and those that have the best fragrance. Most of these roses were bred for growing in the garden, but we'll even look at some varieties that are ideal for growing in containers. So there's something for everyone in this week of beauty. We're visiting the Antique Rose Emporium in Brenham, Texas a place that specializes in old rose varieties. You won't believe the number of roses we'll see here. But before we get started, I thought it might be fun to take a look at some interesting facts about the rose itself and its history. It's fascinating to me that archaeologists have found fossils of roses that go back three million years. 
And the first recorded reference of a rose growing in a garden was recorded by the ancient Sumerians over 3,000 years ago BC in what is now the country of Iraq. And this one, the Sweetbriar Rose, was known in the 1500s. It's mentioned in the writings of Chaucer and Shakespeare. Here's a rose that Josephine, Napoleon's wife, would have known. She had a rose garden with 250 varieties. Of course, now there are thousands to choose from. If you'll join me this week, we'll see as many as we can. From the garden, I'm Alan Smith. And from the prize closet, Darrow has emerged with more good free stuff, this being Monday, of course. Well, sure, because it is an ironclad tradition here at the News Center. And it, 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 it dates yeah. back more than a decade. <laughs> That long? Really? Wow. Before I'm getting old. <laughs> this is Monday. It's a day we always give away free stuff. The first person to call one of the numbers on the screen and correctly answer our trivia question will win four tickets to a Shreveport Captain's home game. Here's the question. Who is the only player currently on the Captain's roster with major league experience? Today's dial in for thousands count and direction is nine up. Well, we still have a correct answer. We're looking for the only player currently on the captain's roster with major league experience. Keep trying those captains. The captains are dead even this season. 20 wins, 20 losses. They'll try to get on the positive side of that mark tonight with four, game four of a five-game series with the Wichita Wranglers. The captains find themselves just a game and a half out of first place in the standings. The only team really in the Texas League that seems to be distinguishing itself so far this season is San Antonio. The missions are 28 and 12, and threatening to run away with the West, and they will be here for five games starting Wednesday. The LSU Tigers, losers to Alabama in the Southeastern Conference Tournament, have surrendered their number one ranking to the Tide in both major polls. LSU is now number two, but they're the top seed and the host for their NCAA regional. Same can be said for Alabama. LSU will open in Baton Rouge against North Carolina Greensboro Thursday night. Keep giving that trivia question a shot, and we'll go to Cachetta when we come back. Keith Williams, who played for the Giants a little bit last year, is the only player on the captain's roster with major league experience. Steve Strother of Shreveport knew that. He'll see Keith and the captain play for free. When Cachetta's Vicki Johnson left Louisiana Tech a year ago, she had established herself as one of the best players in Texture's history. And now she's headed for New York in the women's NBA. It's a long way from Red River Parish to Madison Square Garden, but she's ready for the trip, as Cliff Cotton tells us. For more than 900 students, this will be their fondest memory of the Thomas Assembly Center. But for one of the faces in the crowd, this is just the last of many great moments on the Assembly Center floor. But Vicki Johnson's accomplishments as a lady texter only made graduation day more special. It's like a dream come true. Uh, only thing I regret uh, in my career is uh, not winning a national championship. But uh, this graduation takes the place of part of that. Here's a shot, Smith. Even though she didn't win a national title, she did win 116 other games, score more than 1,900 points, and find a home away from home. I look up at the banners and stuff, and and I uh, was thinking about the great times I had at Louisiana Tech. Uh, Tech is just a, 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 just, just a home for me. I don't think that I will ever close the chapter at Tech because Tech has, has given me so much uh, reward in life and helped me to accomplish a lot of things in life. Uh, but it was kind of close to, uh, for me to you know, step into the real world. But walking across the graduation stage isn't the only major event in Vicky's life this spring. In June, she'll leave Cachata for New York City and the WNBA. A transition she says could be difficult. I love uh, Cachata. It's very small. Uh, the people are very friendly. I think that's the reason why I come home a lot. I'm very scared about going to New York because it is very big, but I think that uh, the basketball, the people, the family around the basketball uh, team, I think will be very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky knows about a sense of family. Growing up on the quiet streets of Cachata lends itself to that. Johnson hopes that will translate to the busier streets of New York. I hope that uh, wherever I go, I'll get that, uh, that, that, that warm heart 
from all everybody, you know. But uh, yeah, I will miss my high school principal and her family and my, my, my family and my friends and stuff. But Johnson says she can't worry about what she's leaving behind because the WNBA is the chance of a lifetime and gives her a chance to be a part of basketball history. I never thought that that they would ever have a professional league here. Yeah, I pray, but never knew. One of my goals now is uh, to be beyond, to, to be recognized as one of the top players, uh, one of the top 10 players that uh, ever played the game of, of basketball. And what better place to shoot for the stars than the city that never sleeps? In Cachetta, Cliff Cotton, New Center 6 Sports. You got pretty good fishing down in Cachetta. That's when the fishing should be super about 115. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. It was moving day for some of the people in the Bowie County Tax Assessor's Office. Folks in the car license section moved into new offices in the county building on Highway 67. And remember, when you get your renewal notice, don't forget where the new office is, and you'll be able to use the new drive through When it comes to them, they can come up here, present that with their proof of insurance, and be able to do that without leaving their car. It took about two hours to get all the computers hooked back up in the new office. Bowie County is looking to save about $24,000 a year by moving into the new office on Highway 67. And that's it for the news at 6. Thank you for tuning in. Can we see you back there at 10. Have a great evening.